what's up happy sunday <laughs> i am oh my gosh y'all so much has been happening and been going on yes i am back in my car because it's finals week there's other stuff that's happening um in the midst of that i'm preparing for vacation a lot of stuff going on my anxiety is trying to go through the roof but god is is just really showing me his supernatural power and showing me how to just stay in him and stay calm um but please pray for your girl i've been it's still a struggle it's still a struggle um hello to all my new subscribers i'm up to 78 i'm excited i'm so excited so hello to everyone um welcome to lady t ministries i am lady t we are going to jump into this word i am excited to share this um i had a dream with well not with this word but the word the the scripture was given after the dream um, God gave me the scripture after the dream because I really didn't understand it, but I am, I'm trying, okay, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do? Okay, I'm hearing, tell the dream first, then read the scripture. Okay, that's what we're going to do. So, uh, I think it was last week. I had a dream that I had on conditioner on my hair and I decided that I was going to leave this conditioner in overnight for us that are curly girl friendly doesn't matter what race like sometimes you know you can do like a overnight deep conditioning right so in this dream that's what I was doing oddly enough um what i like to do when i actually in real life like to deep condition i like to put a plastic bag on my head like either a plastic cap or literally like the grocery bags because it holds in the heat right i know i should get a steam cap but th this is what we working with right now it works okay and it's disposable whatever so in the dream i did the same thing i put a bag over my head then on top of that I put a wig and I still don't understand why I was putting on a wig um while I had that you know hot, you know that hot cap on because I'm like first off sweat and so I was just like yo okay and so <laughs> it was just strange I because I, I would never do that I would maybe like put on a headscarf or a knitted cap in real life. But in the dream, I had conditioner on my hair, I put on the grocery bag, and then I put the wig on. And somehow it was from night to the next day, very quickly. And I was sitting there talking to my mother in the dream, and I remembered in the dream that I had this conditioner in my hair for over almost like more than a day not quite two days but more than a day and i remembered and i said oh my gosh oh my gosh i said oh my gosh i gotta take this this stuff out so instead of taking the cap and the wig off of my head i lifted it up from behind and i started to feel my hair and i felt my hair you know thinking that maybe my hair absorbed it and it was really really soft or maybe really sweaty underneath there but it was clumpy like the conditioner ended clumping up and then i started to worry and i was like oh my gosh like what is going to happen to my hair and so i start pulling at my hair trying to get the clumps out and next thing i know just clumps of hair is just coming out and i'm just like I'm losing my hair I'm losing my hair and I was like this has never happened to me before like I've left conditioners I've never left it on like overnight in real life but I've left it on for an hour almost two hours and this is even like with protein treatments too I know you're not supposed to do it but <laughs> sometimes I have because you know you get busy and you start doing other stuff as you're waiting for your hair to condition 
And so I was just like, oh my gosh, my hair is coming out. And I started, I, I started to feel myself getting upset. And I started to feel my mind racing like, well, what if it's not the conditioner? What if it's, you know, I'm really sick or there's a condition that I have and all this stuff. And then immediately I just felt the presence of God was like, don't go there. Don't think about that. I was like, okay, Lord. So I obeyed and I, I stopped thinking about that. And I'm just pulling like clumps of hair, just clumps. And as I'm pulling, it's revealing like this Mr. Clean, shiny scalp, like bald headed scalp. And as I'm pulling it, I'm getting less and less upset. And I'm getting less and less anxious about what's happening. And I'm sitting there thinking like, oh my gosh, like I actually look good with a bald head. And I started to get excited because I was like, oh, this is something different. This is new. I've never had a bald head. Um, and then I started in the dream, I started to think about different makeup styles. I started to think of different ways that I could buy different wigs and then finally like glue them down and there's no puff because of my braids underneath. I was thinking so many things and I remember vividly towards the end of the dream, my head was completely bald. Um, I had makeup on, I had full makeup on and I was smiling, I was so happy. Like, it was sad that I lost my hair, but it was also, you know, I was joyous. Like, I was at peace that it was off of me and this was a new chapter, this was a new thing that I was going to try being a bald-headed woman. So, <laughs> after that, I woke up and I was like, God, I don't understand this dream at all please give me understanding what one, one of the first things that i could discern was like it wasn't about any looming or dooming sickness illness um any type of warning because god cut that i mean when the spirit of god cut that in that dream of me even thinking that way he cut it he was like no you're not going to think that way and i literally in the dream just stopped thinking that way and that's when i started to become joyful in me losing my hair and being bald so um i was just like oh my gosh wow so seeking wise counsel um, I asked them to pray with me, specifically my mom. Hi, mom. And God brought it to her attention that basically what it means, what the, what the dream that he gave me is to be discerned as is the fact that, how can I break it down? So conditioner is supposed to be a good thing for your hair, right? But if you leave it on too long, it can actually damage it. Thus, bringing out hair and leaving bald spots or just leaving yourself bald, right? And what God helped me and my mother to discern, Holy Spirit did, is the fact that this was a new phase, a new transition, a new way of doing things this is going to be different but really it was signifying letting go of what used to work and what was good to now transition and be like oh you get to start over because you you have a bald head so now you have to figure out exactly what's going to make your hair grow back you got to figure out exactly what um, is going to happen and how to make your hair be a certain type of way because when I tell y'all I was joyful I was joyful because I was like oh brand new start I'm gonna actually see how my actual curl pattern grows in because in real life like I have 3c right here I have like 4a all in here in the back it's like a mixture of 4b 4c 4z if you know the curl pattern um 
like I don't even know what to call it but if you know the different types of curl patterns you know exactly what I'm talking about when I'm talking about like 4a 4b 4c like it's a mixture of everything but I was genuinely excited in the dream because I was like oh I'm gonna get to start over and I'm gonna do like a pixie cut like I was thinking all of these things and so after that um as I was thinking and praying about what God wanted me to share this week, which is Luke chapter 13, verse three through seven, God told me to connect it to my dream. And I was like, huh, how is this going to connect? So let's go read the scripture. It is, like I said, Luke chapter 13 verses three to seven actually i'm gonna read from um one verse one to seven because i always like to read in the entire context of the bible so not taking it out of context and excuse me seemingly shaping it into my own words i want y'all to hear for yourself i want y'all to read it for yourself highly encourage you to read different um versions of how of the bible however holy spirit leads um i know holy spirit has me in like new living translation but sometimes holy spirit will lead me to read amplified new international version niv um, King James Version, all that stuff. But do it as Holy Spirit leads, right? And read it in full context. Understand exactly what's going on, word for word, what's happening. Study, 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 study. So let's read. This is Luke chapter 13, verse 1 through 7. I'm reading from the NLT version. It says, About this time, Jesus was informed that Pilate, sorry if I mispronounced, has murdered had murdered some people from Galilee as they were offering sacrifices at the temple. Do you think those Galileans were worse sinners than all the other people from Galilee? Jesus asked. Is that why they suffered? Not at all. And you will perish too unless you repent of your sins and turn to God. And what about the 18 people who died when the tower in Siloam fell on them? Were they worse sinners in Jerusalem? No. And I tell you again that unless you repent, you will perish too. Then Jesus told this story. A man planted a fig tree in his garden and came again and again to see if there was any fruit on it. But he was always disappointed. Finally, he said to his gardener, I've waited three years and there hasn't been a single fig. Cut it down. It's just taking up space in the garden. And so I'm gonna continue to read. The, garden, the gardener answered, sir, give it one more chance. Leave it another year and I'll give it special attention and plenty of fertilizer. If we get figs next year, fine. If not, then you can cut it down. So like I said, I like to read everything through and through. So I read all the way down to verse nine, but let's focus on verse three and to seven. Um, so initially, Jesus had asked, uh, as they were offering sacrifices in, at the temple, he was like, do you think these those Gal Galileans um, were worse sinners than all the other people from Galilee? Jesus asked, is that why they suffered? Jesus said, verse 3, not at all. And you will perish too unless you repent of your sins and turn to God. And what about the 18 people who died when the tower in Siloam fell on them? Were they worse sinners in Jerusalem? No. And I tell you again that unless you repent, you will perish too. And then it goes into the parable of the barren fig tree. I love how, I don't know if anybody else notices this, but I love how every story in the Bible is set up to be connected to another. Like sometimes we may be like, oh, this story is kind of relatable because Jesus was in the same place, same time. Nah, not so much. It's, <laughs> I mean, yes, but it's more of how everything is connected. So initially God is saying, repent. And then he gives a parable of the barren fig tree saying that this fig tree had time to grow fruit, but 
it didn't so it needs to be cut down but then the gardener pleaded and was like hold on just give it another year i'll make sure to give it extra special attention and plenty of fertilizer verse eight right and i was like god how does this connect and holy spirit um showed me that in the way that it connects is that in the dream that i had you know we had the conditioner which you know we can say that conditioner for the hair is good um but if you leave it on for too long it can damage your hair right it, it can i don't know exactly in what way it can damage but it can damage your hair right and what I heard Holy Spirit say was if you stay in a place that seems good for too long then and the emphasis on seems like it seems good like it seems like it's a good thing like oh you can leave it in overnight but you really don't know how it's going to react and conditioner is not supposed to clump up it's supposed to make everything silky smooth right but this conditioner in my hair clumped up. So anyway, <laughs> connecting that to the scripture is just like, you think that something is good for a while, but like, you know, either like being in sin or trying to go and do your own thing, which is still in sin, but you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just, doing things outside of what is truly from God and which is sinful you know when we decide to do our own thing we're leaning on to our own understanding if we decide to be lustful jealous anger angry for a very long time bitter for a very holding on to bitterness and grudges for a long time then you know, like those things are outside of God. If we hold on to those things and we feel like they're conditioning us, they're making us feel good, they're feeding us, after a while, it's gonna break off our strength. It's gonna break off our wisdom. It's going to break those things off. And then we have to start anew, right? We have to start and we have to change and be different and start anew, which is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. But sometimes we stay in a comfortable place that seems so good. So like case and example, um, what can I think of? Like uh, when I was in school, I, <laughs> I wanted to stay for a long time. Um, and but i knew that my graduation was coming up there was no way for me to avoid it if i continue to self-sabotage i think that's the word that i'm looking for self-sabotage and make a way to stay because it was comfortable and the people that i hung around brought me joy and i wouldn't have to feel sadness because i wasn't the one leaving yet and i could still stay around I would have been breaking and losing a lot of things. I wouldn't have been able to be in good soil, good ground to produce fruit. I would have been barren because a season has to come to end, right? But if we continue to grab onto that season and be like, no, I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna stay here. When it's over, when it's done, then we're not going to be producing any fruit. And so specifically for me, what I felt Holy Spirit was leading me to do was let go of the former things, things that seemed good, things that were good for that season, things that had conditioned you have now become a hardened conditioner that is bringing out your hair. It's, it's bringing out things that shouldn't be brought out but be hopeful and be glad because now you're moving into a new transition because those former things are being let go of 
those former things are being disposed of. They're not being attached to you anymore. Those were good momentarily. The condition worked momentarily, but it was only for that moment. And after I left it in a little bit too, well, not even a little bit, too long of a season, it was over a whole day in the dream. It was nighttime the next day. The next day, it was evening. Like, it was like literally daytime. I put the conditioner in and then the dream switched to like evening of the next day. And I had, oops, like, oop, forgot about it. But sometimes we're in seasons where we forget that you know, there are some things that we let go of and we get get a sudden case of amnesia and we don't want to let go of it and we want to avoid it. But we have to let go because it may have been good for that season, but it is not applicable to where we're transitioning to. So it has to fall off. It has to be let go of. It has to, or otherwise it will harden and break off our, <laughs> break off the importance of our hair like our hair is our crown especially as women like you know it carries wisdom it carries strength we think about you know Samson and when he got his hair cut he lost his strength so we have to be mindful of the things that we're still holding on to while best believe it's gonna fall off whether we make it active and and we go for it and be like yes lord I'm gonna go for it i'm going to let it go you do what you need to do lord or we're gonna be like hmm, you know oops i got amnesia i'm not uh, no i don't want to do it it's uncomfortable to let go it's gonna come off and the new transition is going to be so different that what you used to do like condition your hair what you used to do in relationships and friendships and and in life and how you would approach an angry situation a bitter situation that will all change this new season this new transition it will all change you you're gonna have a whole different like playbook a whole new different strategies it's going to be built up what uh, on on what you have already learned but it's going to be new it's going to be different you're going to have to depend on god on what to do so y'all i hope that made sense that's all i had to say <laughs> i pray that this has truly and tremendously blessed y'all I love y'all. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here because I'm hungry and I need to make a couple phone calls. So I'm about to get some food, y'all. Real quick, there's a McDonald's back, back here behind me. I might go to Panera Bread. I don't know. Off topic. But I love y'all. I pray that this blesses y'all so very much. And I will see y'all on Saturday. Not Sunday, but Saturday. All right, love y'all. Bye.